Hey everyone, welcome to a video on hitscan versus projectile firearms in Neo FPS. In this video, we're going to be looking at the difference between the two shooter types, what systems and firearm modules are available for them, and how to customize the look and behavior of them. I'll be adding timestamps to the description so you can skip to the relevant parts. But otherwise, let's start by explaining what hitscan and projectile shooters actually are. So, hitscan shooters are your old school Raycast based shooting systems. They're instantaneous, as you can see here. Every time the gun fires, there's a line immediately connecting from the gun barrel to the hit point, and then that fades out over a fraction of a second. It's a very quick, responsive, and also a pretty cheap way of handling gunshots, and it's well suited to an arcadey feel with fast paced gameplay and instant feedback. The other method we're going to look at is ballistic projectiles. This is when we actually spawn a bullet object with a set velocity from the gun barrel. And then that bullet travels through the air until it hits something. So here I've switched the gun to ballistic mode. And as I fire at the ground or into the air, you can see the projectiles arcing away from the gun. So this setup could be used to recreate a range of feels from realistic uh, through to exaggerated mortar style projectiles that take practice and skill to place near your targets. So first up, let's dig into the hitscan shooters and take a look at how we can work with them and what they can do. If we quickly open up the prefab for the gun that we were using there, uh, collapse the stuff we don't care about. So on this gun, we have two separate shooters here that we were switching between. We have the ballistic shooter and we have the hitscan shooter. So the hitscan shooters work by instantly raycasting this maximum distance here from the muzzle tip towards its target point. This use camera aim property defines if that target point is based on your crosshair or whether it's just based on the forward vector of the muzzle tip of the gun. And you can set it to use the crosshair for hip fire, for aim down sights, for both or for neither. We cast against the layers here and we can select whether to query against trigger colliders and so on. So let's just have a look at the modular firearm component. And up at the top here, you can see a section for the shooter modules. Hitting this drop down shows all of the available options. And for hit scan, that means the hit scan shooter, which is the one that we've just been looking at that fires a single shot. We have the spread hit scan shooter. So this one fires rays with random spread inside a cone. Uh, you'd use this for things like shotgun type weapons. And then lastly, we have the pattern hit scan shooter. So this one allows you to define a set pattern that the bullet rays will fire in. Uh, a game that uses this a lot is Apex Legends, where for example, the Eva 8 shotgun fires with a figure eight spread. The Mastiff uses a straight line. Uh, the Peacekeeper fires a star shaped spread and so on. Going back to the original hit scan shooter, let's take a look at the different options for the visuals. Down at the bottom here, we have a section called Tracer. And if I select the prototype field here, then that should take us to the folder where they're all stored. Currently, we have the simple additive trail selected. So let's just have a quick refresh on how that looks. So yeah, we just get a neatly defined line from the gun barrel to the hit point. Let's just have a look at the other options then. So if we click the little picker here, then we get the project browser which is filtered for just the hitscan trail prefabs. Let's switch from that simple one over to the dissolve. I'll bump up the size a bit, 0.1, and set the time so that it lasts a little bit longer to 0.5. So now if I hit play, then you can see that this tracer is more broken up it's slightly meatier, and instead of just fading quickly out, it kind of burns away in the air. Another option is the distortion bullet trail. Now, these ones want to be quite a lot bigger and last for much longer, like a full second, for example. And these trails will give you a bit of that old fear style, uh, using a kind of refraction effect to give a pressure dif differential or a heat haze look for the path the bullet took. Okay, next up, we have the line and particle effect. Now these ones have that line effect from the simple additive trail, 
but they also spawn particles along their length. So the settings that I'm entering here, the size and the duration, they'll affect the line part of that only. The particle system in the tracer prefab then has its own settings for the scale and lifetime of the particles. So here, when I fire, you briefly see that tracer line, but you also get these particles lingering in the air along its path. Now, I should point out that these are really just demonstration assets. I'm not a VFX artist, but they should get the point across on how they work, and the systems are there for you to do what you want with. Right, lastly, let's have a look at my favorite, the noisy hit scan trail. So here we maybe want a little bit more size, um, but let's really exaggerate the duration here so that you can fully see the effect. Okay, and the way this one works is that it uses another particle system that spawns invisible particles along the path of the shot. And then it connects those particles together using a line renderer. The particle system uses Unity's standard noise function, uh, which means that the particles each drift away from their starting point, and then the line kind of connects that up and swirls around uh, as the material dissolves away. So yeah, there we go. Now, if you want to create your own trails, then we have a number of these components available to you. For example, we have the line renderer hitscan trail here. This is the same one that's used on the simple dissolve and distortion trails, but with a different shader applied to the line renderer on each one. You have the line and particle hitscan trail. So that one just needs a prefab with a pooled object component, a line renderer and a particle system. And you have the noisy line hitscan trail as well, which needs a similar setup. So particle system, line renderer, pooled object, and then the hitscan trail component here, where you specify things like the number of points and their spacing. And then lastly, we have the simple particle hitscan trail. If you want to write your own, say you have some visual effects asset that you want to get working with Neo's hitscan shooters, then all you need to do, if I just open this script up, is you need your mono behavior to implement this I pooled hitscan trail here. Uh, one other thing that you need is the pooled object component. So here I have it set as a required component for this behavior. So the way you go about writing one of these is you need your mono behavior and you also need to inherit from the interface. So I pooled hitscan trail. You want a pooled object reference somewhere in your class, which you grab on a wake. Uh, it has to be on the same object, so you can just use get component for that. And then with this interface, the only thing it needs you to implement is a public version of this method here. So this is show, and it takes a start position, end position, size, and duration. Looking at the implementation here, show sets the start position of the line renderer. The end position, it clamps the length to a limit, and then it sets the renderer width based on size and sets the line colors to full white. Then in the update, all it does is it runs a timer. So it adds delta time each frame, and then it uses that timer to modify the alpha of the line renderer start and end point. And then when that timer runs past the duration, the line renderer is disabled and the trail is returned to the pool using that pooled object component that we grabbed in awake. So yeah, that's the starting point for any hitscan trails in code if you want to create your own. Right, now back to Unity, and let's have a look at the ballistic shooters. Looking at the component on that demo gun, we have similar properties to the hitscan shooter, with the big differences being speed instead of distance, and adding in gravity as well. Looking at the different options in the modular firearm setup, we have the ballistic shooter, which is your single bullet version, similar to the hitscan shooter. We have spread ballistic shooter with the shotgun style spread. And then we have pattern ballistic shooter, where you can define the spread pattern yourself. Besides those, uh, the new one is we have a simple ballistic shooter. Now this is similar to the standard ballistic shooter, as you can see here, but it is missing the different spread options for accuracy. So this one always fires precisely forwards. So let's just check some shooters in the demo level. So here we have some pretty fast moving, simple looking projectiles. Back to Unity and the way these projectiles are specified is using the projectile prefab property here. So if I click this, 
it'll take us to the folder with the different demo projectiles. We could try going more realistic with a 0.50 BMG bullet here. So this one's a bit harder to see, a bit a lot more subtle, but you get a bit of that tracer effect as the bullet flies away. For some other options available, again, click the picker next to that property, we'll open the project browser filtered to projectiles. Let's try out the 40mm grenade. So again, this is more subtle as it's intended for more realistic style games. And then just to point out as well that the actual effect of the bullet hitting objects is defined in the firearms ammo effect module. It doesn't matter what type of projectile you switch to, uh, so switching to a grenade here doesn't cause an explosion because the firearm is using a bullet ammo effect, so we're just going to get a bullet hit. Okay, next up we have invisible. Uh, I won't bother to demo that, it just handles physics exactly the same way as the other bullets, but you just won't get any visual effect of the bullet's path. Let's look at the rockets instead. So for these we want to knock the speed right the way down, and then set gravity effect to zero. Again, these are mainly functional demo assets. I'm not a VFX artist, so don't expect the fancy rocket trails and the like. But the systems that you need to achieve them are here as a jumping off point uh, for when you build your own. So yeah, we've got the different sparks and the flames flying at the back of each rocket and then smoke trails behind them too. Right, we'll look at the special projectiles like Sticky later on. But before that, let's check out the different stylized options. Small is what we originally started with, so uh, let's check out the large, chunky style ones instead. Again, this is with gravity switched off, so you can see easily how you could achieve something like a plasma rifle or a similar effect like that. Okay, so those are all of the standard projectile prefabs using the ballistic projectile component. If you want to create your own, then that's your starting point. Almost all of the demo projectiles use it, except for the guided projectiles here. So we'll look at those alongside the sticker projectiles in a minute. And then the ballistic projectile component is what handles the movement and the casting, and it has a number of useful properties. Minimum distance here prevents the mesh from showing too close to the gun, in case that looks weird. Follow curve orients the projectile to always point down its velocity vector. Uh, ignore root is pretty important. That's used to skip whole hierarchies when performing casts. For example, the guns will pass the wielding character's root object here, meaning that the bullet will ignore all colliders on the character that shoots it. We can set it to forget this ignore root after it's travelled a set distance, in case we want things like grenades that can hit your player character if you shoot them straight up. Forgetting the ignore root also saves a few calculations on hit, because the bullet doesn't need to walk the collider's hierarchy to check it against this root object. Here we can set the bullet to hit or ignore trigger colliders. Instant means that the bullet will perform one movement tick immediately once it's fired. This generally looks better in first person, and it's also more responsive, but it can look odd in third person though as the bullet trails can seem to start ahead of the gun, depending on how you're interpolating. All projectiles need a pooled object component. They're all using the pooling system. And aside from that, the trail renderer and the bullet trail cleaner are just optional components for handling the rendering. The projectile component will handle hiding and showing the bullet mesh, but everything else visually is up to you. For example, the trail renderer comes with Unity, and this creates a line based on the position of the object over time. While this bullet trail cleaner component is an EFPS utility that just resets that trail renderer when the projectile is pulled, and it also allows the trail to finish rendering after the bullet hits something. So that will handle the vast majority of cases, but if you did want to create your own projectile scripts, then let's open this up. And essentially, the ballistic projectile is built on a base class that you can reuse, so it just handles some shared functionality, and this is shared with the guided projectiles. Or, if you don't want that, then you can just implement the iProjectile interface in your mono behaviors. This interface is quite a bit more complicated than the hitscan trail one that we were looking at earlier. Uh, it needs you to implement code for firing the projectile, for teleporting it, and then a couple of C-sharp events that other components like the bullet trail cleaner can subscribe to, which you will need to trigger at the correct points. Okay, cool. So that was the standard projectiles. Let's now have a look at some pre-built weapons with some of the more involved projectile options. 
So first up on the table here, we have a shotgun set up with sticky projectiles. So here you see I have eight shells in the shotgun. I'll fire a few off. And the bullets essentially stick in place where they hit. So we have four here. I can walk up to them, use them, picking them up, and then they go back in my inventory and I can reload the gun back up to eight rounds. So this is another big advantage of the ballistic shooters, in that each projectile is essentially a game object, allowing you to customise and add behaviours for different functionality. Here, for example, we have timed explosive projectiles. So they stick in place for a set delay and then they detonate. Both of these options, the best way to check out how they work is to take a look at the prefabs and to pick them apart. Again, there is a lot of flexibility in what you can do with the projectile objects. So those examples were just set up to demonstrate two possible options. Another one to look at is these guided projectiles here. So this gun is attached directly to our character hierarchy and it has a different input handler that uses the ability button to press the trigger instead of primary fire. The gun is set up in a very similar way to a regular firearm, but without the inventory components and without render geometry or animation systems and things like that. So the guided projectiles are a little bit different to the ballistic projectiles in how they work. Each of the demo ones uses this same guided ballistic projectile script, and this shares some of the basic properties with the ballistic projectiles. So it has the ignore route, the visible distance and the recycling options. The big difference is these tracker and motor components here. Motor is dead simple. This is just what drives the projectile towards its target. Simple steering will just turn smoothly as it flies, while the drunken missile will jerk around erratically, but with some directed steering that improves as it gets closer to its target. And then you have the trackers. So player tracker is pretty simple. This one will just home in on the current player character. You probably don't want to use that on your own guns, but they're really useful for things like uh, enemy turrets, such as in the jetpacks demo. Or you might have some interesting mechanic idea that could use it, such as a self-healing gun. The range tag tracker, that will pick the nearest object within a certain range and with a certain tag, and then it will target that. It recalculates the best target at set intervals. So let's look at one of those briefly. Here's the nearest object with tag tracker component. So detection tag is the unity object tag like you'd see up here. Detection layers and range. And then detection counter is the delay between each search stick where it checks for the best target. The third tracker type is this targeting system tracker. So this one essentially defers the target point selection to the gun that fires the projectile. And then there's a number of different firearm modules that act as a targeting system. When you fire the gun, the shooter module will spawn the projectile and then assign it with the uh, relevant targeting system. And then the projectile will home in based on that. So for example, there are the target lock and multi-target lock triggers. Those lock onto targets while you hold the trigger. And then if the target lock completes and you release the trigger, the projectiles will fire. There's a targeting system that ties into the laser pointers, or a similar one that just uses a raycast ahead of the gun constantly for a similar effect. And there's also a target tracking ammo effect. So that one lets you shoot an object to tag it, and then the subsequent guided projectiles will home in on that point on the object. If you want more information on how to leverage those modules, then you could take a look in the hit scan versus projectiles section of the documentation. And then that links to the references for each of the components involved. Anyhow, I hope that helps. If you have any questions or comments, then hop on the Discord and say hi. It'd be great to see what you're all making with Neo FPS 2. So we have showcase channels to show off your work and to get feedback, alongside the usual support and chat channels. So maybe I'll see you all there, but otherwise it'll be in the next video. Cheers.